Yesterday, Ecocash issued a statement where it advised its customers that it's revising its terms in accordance to the directive in the monetary policy statement. Highlights of the Ecocash statement are that one person can only open one Ecocash account, agent accounts have officially been banned, and the maximum daily limit is now 5,000 Zim dollars. Now what does this all mean to the average Zimbo? We start off with agent lines. The purpose of the agent was to facilitate cash in and cash out transactions. However, the amount of hard cash in circulation is incredibly low and as such there has not been much of those transactions taking place. And to add to the demise of agents, you can fund your Ecocash account via bank to wallet transfer. Also RBZ says agent accounts are now being primarily used for illegal forex trading. Then we go on to the main event which is the daily limit of $5,000. If you have been following the RBZ for the past couple of months, you'll know that they have been cracking the whip hard at Ecocash, preaching most about how the agent system was being abused by black market forex traders to illegally trade in forex and consequently get the rate skyrocketing. As a way of combating that, the RBZ did two things here, that is it abolished agents and imposed daily limits. One would argue that to some extent these measures that the RBZ put have managed to arrest the rate but as with any measure put in place there is always a downside to it. If you are enjoying this video please do subscribe and if you are finding it useful do share it as much as you can. It goes a long way to helping me make more of such videos for you guys. Right. Let's look at some examples of these downsides. Most convenient way of paying for Zoll is through Ecocash. Those of you that buy the 100 gigabyte packages going up will no longer be able to pay for these packages using Ecocash. Same goes for Tel One's unlimited packages. Let's look at fuel. A full tank of diesel is $5,001 and a full tank of petrol is $5,589. So again, paying for a full tank is no longer possible with Ecocash. We also look at basic groceries for a family. Now according to Consumer Council of Zimbabwe, in their July 2020 report they quoted the amount of basic groceries for a family of six at $14,256.98, which is almost three times above the Ecocash daily limit. Other areas of convenience that will cease to exist are school fees payments using Ecocash, some bill payments, and high value purchases like furniture or electronic gadgets. Pretty much Ecocash is now reduced to being a wallet for microtransactions like your airtime that you can buy on WhatsApp using Ecocash by sending the word airtime to the number 0717-684-274 and also one or two groceries for the day. That convenience that was popularizing Ecocash is being stripped away one directive at a time. So this is what it translates to. If you are the sort of person performing high value transactions on a daily then you really need to consider moving your transactions to your bank account. For services and goods you could conveniently pay for using Ecocash like Zoll, life is now much harder. For everyone else who does low value transactions, life goes on like nothing happened so no need to worry there. For merchants, nothing really changes as well. You can still receive payments and you can only liquidate them through a linked bank account. The stuff that RBZ implemented back in June. Just to make it clear, the measures put by RBZ are targeting all mobile money platforms including OneMoney, Telecash and MyCash. But they did single out Ecocash as being the biggest culprit. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them all. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next time.